Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise along the banks of Coal Creek in the uh, shriveling El Dorado National Forest west of Tahoe, California on this gorgeous shit, Tuesday morning. I have no idea what day it is. July 18th, 19th or something and uh, this is day seven with no internet. I have been unplugged for one week as of today. Don't know if we still have a planet outside of here or not. But uh, I have been remiss obviously in bringing you my quote of the day for the past seven days. So we're gonna remedy that right now with this new book by one of our own tribes members Dean Walker one of our very own Humpty Dumpty tribes members has come out with his brand new Bible of the Apocalypse the impossible conversation choosing reconnection and resilience at the end of business as usual I will be coming back on Sunday with a full sermon, a full doomsday sermon from Brother Dean's new book. But today, we're just going to have a bunch of quotes about uh, the end of business as usual. And uh, to back up my contention, and we're going to turn to the opening of chapter 5. Got to put on my brand new, how do you like my new 99 cent glasses? Okay, our shadow on the scale of government and corporation. This is his version of the global corporatocracy mixing with uh, the government, the new world order, as he does not call it that, but I do. Okay, and we're going to read one, two... We're probably going to read about seven quotes, so we'll have a whole week. All right. The first quote is from Justin Farrell, Yale University sociologist, quoting from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Quote, the contrarian efforts, meaning the global warming deniers, the contrarian efforts have been so effective for the fact that they have made it difficult for ordinary Americans to even know who to trust. The, the answer is you can't trust anybody. I can't trust Sancho Panza. All right, now the next one I might have already played. This is uh, Noam Chomsky. Now, Dean, you do have a, uh, a typo here. I got I to gotta caution you about this is not from January 2011, this is January 2017. So this is Noam Chomsky talking about Donald Trump, not Barack Obama, although most ordinary Americans do not understand that this quote pretty much could be said about Barack Obama, but this is about Donald Trump. Take it away, Noam Chomsky from January of this year. The latest election a couple of days ago, you could almost interpret it as the death knell for our species. There was an article in Bloomberg Business Week, not a radical rag exactly, that they're worried about the Republicans in Congress. One of the reasons is that they are global de warming deniers, almost all of them. That means that the powerful house committees like science and technology and so on, I don't know if there is a house committee on science and technology here in July, are going to be in the hands of people who think there is nothing to global warming, or that is what they say anyway. What they really think may be a very different story. One of them was quoted as saying, this won't be a problem because God will take care of it. 
I had that very quote recently. I can't remember who was that idiot. Anyway, <clears throat> if this was happening, or is that if this were happening, did, did Noam Chomsky do the was were mistake? The one of the greatest linguists on the planet. If this was happening in some small country, it would not matter much. But when it is happening in the richest, most powerful country in the world, it is a danger to the survival of our species. So we are essentially saying you can just kiss it all goodbye. Yes, you can. Let's go over there to Upton Sinclair, probably from a hundred years ago. It is difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on his not understanding it. There you go. And uh, I need I did do a full sermon recently from this fellow named Paul Kingsnorth from the Dark Mountain Project. This is Paul Kingsnorth weighing in on Donald Trump. Anyone who has tried to talk to someone with different opinions about the election of Donald Trump or the British exit from the European Union or climate change will know that there is a madness in the air right now which goes far beyond the facts of any particular case and which engulfs them until they are lost in the fog. When people argue about Brexit, they are not really arguing about Brexit when they fight about Donald Trump, they are not really fighting about Donald Trump. These things, such as Donald Trump, have become symbols, archetypes of the kind of future we want and don't want, the kind of people we think we are, and the kind of people we think others are. It is as if we are fighting over myths, stories, representations of the world as it is, and we want it to be. Thank you, Paul. Okay, we're going to listen now to Stefan Romstorff from the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research talking about uh, the horsemen of the apocalypse, otherwise known as Donald Trump's cabinet. Uh, if you're figuring out who he's talking about, take it away, Stefan. Quote, we are all very worried here. We should assume our worst fears will be realized. Yes. Uh, I'm quite sure this uh, statement is bearing out. And now, of course, my favorite quote of them all, I probably should have led off with this. This quote I'd never read before. Thank you, Dean, for digging this one up. This is from Rex Tillerson, uh, you know, the, the former CEO of ExxonMobil, uh, who for seven years, I have been calling the single biggest planet eater, the single biggest globalist planet eater, evil scumbag on the planet. So what was the first thing? I believe the first appointment of Donald Trump was putting the single biggest planet eater on planet Earth as our new Secretary of State. This is Rex Tillerson speaking to a group of Exxon Mobil shareholders. Take it away, Rex. What good is it to save the planet if humanity suffers? What good is it to save the planet if humanity suffers? Which, of course, is another way what Rex is asking, is saying here, that it is better to destroy 
planet Earth than expect human beings to give up fossil fuels that the inalienable God-given right of human beings to use fossil fuels trumps the right of every other single species of earthling we share this planet with to live? That is the question. And this is Derek Jensen responding to the quote from Rex. Derek. This is precisely why there will be no voluntary transformation. I wish I would have had this quote when I wrote my Human Supremacy book. And we're going to close with two quotes from our old buddy Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon the former Goldman Sachs executive that Donald Trump, the anti-globalist, made his chief strategist. A Goldman Sachs, you know, Rex Tillerson is Secretary of State. This is the anti-globalist Donald Trump that uh, Alex Jones is always cheering down for taking down the New World Order. And we're going to hear two quotes from Stephen to wrap up this. And the first quote, as I've said many times, his most famous quote that I agree with 100%. Take it away, Steve, you old eco-Nazi. I, I love this right below Steve Bannon right next to a Derek Jensen quote. I want to bring everything crashing down and destroy all of today's establishment. Thank you, Steve. That is exactly what I want to do, what Derek Jensen wants to do, what Guy McPherson wants to do. But of course, the difference between Steve Bannon and Derek Jensen and Guy McPherson is what are we going to replace it with? And we will close with what Steve Bannon wants to replace it with and is advising Donald Trump to replace it with. Take it away. Steve Bannon, this was Steve celebrating the Donald Trump presidential victory. Quote, darkness is good. Dick Cheney, Darth Vader, Satan, that is power. There you go. We have our new president's chief advisor cheering on Dick Cheney, Darth Vader, and Satan. There you go. <laughs> and uh, yes, and we wonder why we are so fucked. But anywho, I'm going to wrap up uh, now that I've brought us up to date on our quotes of the week. As I say, I'm going to come back on Sunday with a full doomsday sermon from the impossible conversation by, by uh, Dean Walker. And I want to plug, uh, Dean's going to be having a, um, a workshop, Dean and Carolyn Baker, I believe on September 15th, 16th, and 17th in Ashland, Oregon. I will be there. Sancho Panza will be there. So if you want to, uh, I know you don't give a shit about meeting me, but if you want to meet Sancho Panza, be in Ashland, Oregon on September 15th, and uh, we will talk about the impossible conversation. But right now, I'm going to wrap this up because it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times. Now that I've used my fossil fuels to jack myself up on coffee, I'm going to crank up my gas-sucking truck and... Uh, Heading to Lake Tahoe. If you want to meet me for lunch in Lake Tahoe, I'll be there. 
in about two hours. Bye, guys. Excuse me, little dog.